On this episode of Purposely Curious, we talk about the shady side of the entertainment business. We discuss how Megan Fox was blacklisted for speaking up about mistreatment in the industry a decade before the Me Too movement took off and how the media narrative at the time was that it was her fault. We also discuss how Lana Del Rey is linked to Weinstein and also touch on the Britney Spears saga. Join us as we discuss these hot topics. Get nice and cozy as this episode starts now. Hello, Leone. Greetings, Mary. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. How hot are you? Well, um, right now it's not too bad, but earlier in the day I was hot. <laughs> yeah. Um, driving from place to place to see patients, like the thing is that sometimes patients are kind of semi-close to each other. So it's like I don't feel like the car cools enough. <laughs> fast enough right. yeah right. and i'm in scrubs right yeah so uh, sometimes depending on how hot it is or if the patient doesn't have like ac in their home i feel like super sweaty and gross right right <laughs> and i always always double mask um so it's one of those annoying things that, like and this isn't even the hottest that it gets out here so I'm over it already. I want winter and rain. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny that, especially when you double mask, cause I had to do that for a while too. It, just that alone takes a lot out of you. Just that alone, you know, even though you can like focus and control your breathing like that, that just takes a toll on you, you know? Mm. So. Yeah. So I'm, it's, yeah, it is hot. So right now, it's kind of cool. I work. I, so, oh, another thing is, you know, like I, I live by the beach. Right. So my apartment is kind of like an older apartment. So I don't have AC right. that's built into the apartment. It's really nice uh, cottage. Um, so I, I like to work out on my bike. And, you know, when you're working out, you're I'm like drenched, sweating to be like just on a normal cool day. Right. So I was like, oh my God, this is getting out of control, like how hot it is. Um, so I've been working out later in the day. Um, and then I bought these like LED lights that I put like behind my bookshelf. So that way that like the apartment is dark, but the LED lights, I change the colors depending on my mood that day. Right. And yeah, so I'm like, I need, I can't work out in the dark. So um yeah, so that's been my adjustment. Um, I'm going to probably start looking into, like, little portable fans um, just because, like, I am, like, literally drenched after working out. It's bad. Like, right now, my clothes, I showered. Sorry, it's TMI. I'm going on a rant. <laughs> I'm showered, and so when I put my clothes out, I, like, leave the clothes out because they're, like, drenched um, so that they can kind of dry as a little bit on their own, naturally, you know, and then I put them in the washer. Right. But it's just, uh, yeah, I sweat a lot, a lot. That's good though, because that also means that you're consuming a lot more water, right? I am. Yes. See, that's good. Yes. Seriously. And... That, that's my number one problem with all my friends mm -hmm. who, you know, they're not like you, they're not in the medical profession, you know, they don't understand how important water is, you know, and they have like all these problems, right? And they're, they're simple, they're simple problems, right? They're like, I wonder why I get headaches. I wonder why I feel this or fatigued or I can't think. And I'm like, you're not even drinking like what you should be drinking in water. Like two cups of tea a day. That's not even water, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I don't know, I don't know why people are afraid to drink water these days. And it's like, and I hear, I hear all the stupid excuses. I hear like, well, then I have to get up and pee. And I'm like, okay, you're working from home. So <laughs> what's your problem? Again? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, you're driving me crazy. Like. But no, I, I seriously like hydration for me is huge, you know, like I, I've always consumed water. Like I prefer it over anything else, you know, and especially, you know, like when you said work, working out, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I did a lot of hiking before and, and that takes a toll on you, especially when you're out in the sun, you know, and, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool though. Cause that, you know, it, it keeps you healthy. It keeps your body going and, you know, hydrated and your cells happy and all that. So it's a good thing yeah so i'm trying to think so i'll do like a you remember i told you i had that little container or that little um hydro flask that i bought yes it, uh is that what they call it hydro flask yeah i think so um yeah so i'll put that's like a one liter like just shy of like maybe 850 milliliters right so i drink that all day 
than I do about a liter while I'm working out. That's good. And then after I work out, I drink water. Um, and then in between, I might have juice or tea. But that's on a, on weekdays. I'm very like routine based. Right. And then, you know, on the weekends, I don't probably don't drink as much water, but I'm just like a piggy going at everything, you know. Like <laughs> No, but that's fine though. At least you do it most of the time, you know, of your life, you know. A lot yeah. of people don't even bother and I'm just like I'm like, you seriously, like you could probably feel a lot better if you just drank more water, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. And well anyway. But um I definitely wanted to do some hot topics today. Um we hot hadn't topics. Yeah, <laughs> we hadn't talked in a few weeks. I took a few weeks off um, because it was my birthday and I, like, I just wanted to like. Yes. Yeah. Happy like birthday. I thank you. Um, I wanted to like just last year's birthday was so boring. Um, so I wanted to be a little bit more active with my birthday this year. Um, and when I say boring, obviously because of COVID and COVID is still an issue right now. But I definitely didn't want to not enjoy it with the people that I love. So, um, I took a few, I think what, two weeks off from, uh, from talking to you, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so I definitely stumbled upon something that I didn't realize cause I was younger and it's a uh, Megan Fox being blacklisted. Oh yeah. Um, you've had her on your podcast and yes. so you probably kind of remember, I don't know if I wasn't paying attention um, what I remember um, back then was that she was in the Transformers and, you know, like she was fired and, you know, like what I remember was just believing whatever I would hear, which was kind of like she says stupid shit is kind of I, maybe what the media was saying. Right. Um, and so I just said, oh, she just says stupid shit, you know, like, yeah, can, you know, so, I'm really curious. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you uh -huh. what, what do you remember about Megan Fox in the movie Transformers? She was a gorgeous girl. Yeah. I mean, she's beautiful. Right. And, and, you know, of course, when the first trailer teaser came out of Transformers, you're like, oh shit, you know, but, and of course, you know, she's, um, you know, at, at that time when Transformers came out, she's every nerd's, you know, wet dream, right? I mean, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's like, oh my gosh, she's so hot, she's in the movie. When I saw the movie, um, it kind of bothered me a little bit that they didn't use her as, you know, her character was not good, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they just over-sexualized -sexual her, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, here's a shot of her ass, Let's let's watch her walking, oh... Here's her hot body because she's checking out the car. She's fixing the car, you know? Yeah. And then it's like, oh, and then she's really, really dumb. Okay. And mm -hmm. then, and then she has, oh, and then she has the dumbest, dumbest lines in the whole movie. But she's pretty, right? She's hot. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, that really bothered me. Yeah. And it's, it's because, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, at the time, it's not that I'm pro or against Megan Fox or anything. No, it's just that it's the one character that stood out for me where I'm like, why? What was the point? You know, like that, that was like, why do they do that to her? You know? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. why I was, I was curious. Cause a lot of people don't remember. We, we watch this movie just to be entertained. Right. We're not mm -hmm. looking for a deeper yeah. meaning. We're not looking for like, you know, like, Oh, Oscar winning performances, you know, aside from the special effects, you know, but out of all the characters, hers was just the one that they like, it seemed like somebody went out of their way to like, let's just make her look dumb, you know? And I'm like, why, what was the point of that? You know? Yeah, so I didn't see that, but I think maybe because I was like younger, I was just like, "Ooh, Transformers," you know, like, and right. I I remember just being like, "Wow, she's fucking gorgeous," you know, <laughs> yeah, like, of course. she's hot, like, right. oh my god, like, I, um, and so obviously, I think did she do just that one or did she do two? I can't recall. She did of one. the Transformers. She did one in the second movie. She, I believe she was replaced by a. a shocker you know a model uh was mm -hmm. it is it a, yeah i think it's just a victoria um uh, secret uh, yeah i think she was a victoria secrets model Ra yeah rachel something right mm, i can't recall to be honest Th that's how much it didn't really impact me after <laughs> it's it was something like it was something yeah it was something like uh 
I think her name is Rachel something. Oh no, sorry, yeah. no, no, it's Rosie Huntington Wheatley. Uh, she yeah. re- she replaced her. It's like they wrote they wrote they wrote off her character kind of like oh she broke up with me blah 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 whatever oh but here's a hot new girlfriend who's a model oh and by the way here's a shot of her ass again oh look at her hot body look at her walk up the stairs and I'm like again I'm like really yeah so the <laughs> director of the movie was Michael Bay mm-hmm. um, and again all this was before the Me Too movement right so I you know again. I just never paid attention to it. Um, now this was the movie came out what oof, a long time ago. Um, yeah, this movie was what twenty uh, two thousand seven. Yeah. So there was a video I was just online, and they were basically talking about how Megan Fox was openly talking about how she was mistreated in Hollywood years in 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 her early years right and how she was basically blacklisted for it and this is all before the me too movement right so here you know she said um i had seen an interview and she was just saying that like when certain when she complained about being treated by the directors or you know a certain way um which she said openly in interviews you know with magazines or whatever like the feedback she was getting and what she was saying in the interview, Megan Fox was that she was on Twitter at the time. And like, people were just saying that it's her fault and women as well. She was saying, you know, um, and so that kind of made her feel, uh, like insecure in her own, you know, as far as like, well, I don't want to say anything anymore. Cause everyone's just like trashing me at this point. And then it was, it did seem like all of a sudden she stopped making movies. No one was hiring her. Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it was like, where did she go? Obviously, she got married, had kids, and sometimes she would get roles on TV shows. Um, But, you know, obviously, she had a movie, Jennifer's Body, that she did, which totally tanked at the time and was criticized as well, but is now like a movie, like Coke classic, right? Um, But it just seemed like it was hard for her to get work after she started speaking up about how she was treated. Since the Me Too movement, um, there has been video that resurfaced uh, that was that kind of went viral where she was on Jimmy Kimmel's show. And she talks about on the show how she I think she was like 15 years old and was only a background actress, like an extra. Right. Um, And obviously they basically Michael Bay saw her, I guess, probably was like, wow, she's really pretty, pretty, had them put her in a dress and high heels with a bikini. Um, and you know, the, I guess the people were like, well, she's underage. She can't sit at the bar. Like it's like an issue, you know? Right. Um, and he, it basically said, you know, just do it. You know, like they had her in a bar, I guess, acting like she was older. I have not seen the movie, so I don't know. Um, but at the time, you know, no one, everyone's laughing in the video. No one's like taking her serious, but you can tell she's talking about it in a serious note yeah um so i just thought it was really interesting that a lot of the things that men were caught for whether it's you know directors we've seen it over producers weinstein now right um the way they would use their power and then if you didn't if you either talked bad about them didn't do what they want or whatever it's like you're blacklisted and i think and i was like wow she literally didn't really get any roles right after that now you're seeing her more obviously she's making more movies but these are like up and coming directors and writers right like but she's working so i'm happy for her in that sense um but it was nice to when then i stumbled on that interview for her when they asked her you know it seems like looking back you were speaking out of everything that the me too movement stood for you were saying but no one and even women no one listened to her and it was just like oh it's her fault Cause she's pretty or, you know, cause she's sexy. Like, I don't know. Yeah. W- what's your take as a man? But I was just kind of like, damn, I, I didn't notice it. Well, and it, I was see, like, I should have. That's the thing though. High school me would have been like, she's fucking hot. <laughs> you know, like, I don't care. I don't care if she's hot, you know, but mm-hmm. it's like, you know, that, that wasn't me in high school. That was me. And you know, my post college years This is, you know, me in my thirties, you know, watching that movie thinking, this is a movie about the toys that I played with as a kid. And this poor girl, like, 
got shit on in the whole movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it, you know, it, I get it. You want to show a pretty face, right? But they really just sexualized her. And, and, and like I said, the stupid lines of the movie really bothered me. Mm-hmm. Like, you could watch... They, they, they play those movies all the time on cable on repeat. So I'll, I'll watch them on the weekends. Like, I'll turn one on and I'm like, this is garbage. You know, I'm like, it, it's just, you know, but I get it. And, and even she said it herself, you don't watch these movies for the acting, clearly. It's all about mm-hmm. the effects and the robots, you know, killing each other or whatever, you know. But yeah, I, you know, back then I just thought this, this is, this, uh, this sucks. Um, but yeah, it, it, and you mentioned um, Jennifer's Body, which is a great movie. And it's a movie I want you to watch, but I know it's horror and, you know, I get scared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 well done. It's got a great cast. Um Karen Kusama directed that. What when was it? 2009, I think. Yeah. And it, you know, it basically has to do with her character, you know, being you know, kidnapped by a bunch of guys and like, you know, basically sexually, you know, harassed and left for dead and you know and 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 then she comes back as a demon and for with revenge, you know. And the mm-hmm. brilliant thing about that is, Diablo Cody, Diablo Cody wrote that movie. She she won the Oscar for writing Juno. So much like Juno, Jennifer's body is just comedy. Like you're you're it, it's a horror comedy. Like you're watching, and you're fucking laughing because there's a lot of lesbian jokes in there. There's a lot of gay jokes. There's a lot of straight jokes. You know, there's a lot of sex jokes. You know, uh, but at the same time, these characters in high school are trying to. You know they're discovering sex but she comes back to the demon and she's like i'll fuck anybody and anything you know kind of kind of you know situation you know but she's there for revenge she's got a, she's got a she's got a motive you know so the moody the movie's very clever and watching it today you realize how so far advanced that the movie the statement the movie was making back in 2009 it you know is it was back then compared to today you know it's like it's like, why did it take that long, you know, to get this message out there about women being sexualized and harassed and, you know, um, you know, misogyny, guys just doing whatever they want to women kind of thing, you know? Uh, so there's a very strong message in that movie. And today, I mean, just in the last couple of years, because last a couple, uh, 2019 was, a, was the 10th anniversary of that movie. So... There's been a lot of conversation about that movie, and it's one that I recommend because she's she's not only great in it, but she's got some funny fucking lines in it where I'm just like laughing because the jokes are great. Um, but yeah, it's it's I, I can't I can't go back and watch those old movies, those transfer movies, without thinking like I feel bad for her, you know, because she was mm-hmm. clearly used, you know, and I you know there's all these stories and i'm sure you know talk about it the whole he said she said she's difficult to work with and she said this she said that i mean once you make a billion a billion dollar franchise you know movie it's like you're the king of the castle right if you say like oh that bitch is hard to work with everybody believes you if if you say hey don't hire her everybody believes you so i think that's what was going on at the time yeah, and you probably know. saying she's trouble. Yeah, she's right? tr- yeah, and it's and it, you know, and it probably wasn't true. I mean, you know, there might have been little tidbits of you know, it's like you know, every everybody's got their own thing, right? But I, if I had to guess, I don't think she was you know, a mess and and causing problems and all that. I think that was just one guy. Uh, you know, in this case, it would have been Michael Bay, right? Who was against yeah. her, and you know. It's it it just it just it just blew up quick and next thing you know it's like people don't want to work with her you know Appar- supposedly you know that that's that's what you know you know people are saying that it's like oh that wasn't the case so I'm like well whatever the case was it's like clearly it came out into the public and you know she was not afraid yeah. to speak her mind yeah. but nobody and was I listening think- but nobody was listening that's a problem. Well, we were listening to the not to her. Right. And that's one of the things that now when we see like what I've learned going back to my queen, Britney Spears. Yes. Um, is that the family for this for this situation with Britney where whenever court was coming up, they were shooting TMZ stories. You know what I mean? Right. To make her look bad. And so what was probably happening 
is that when Megan Fox would say these things on Jimmy Kimmel or other shows, right, about her mistreatment. Right. They started saying, you know, well, she had a fucking fit and was saying, you know, this about this director. And I, and I really think that looking back, that's probably how they blacklisted her is like, how do we squash what she's saying? Right. You know, and so it's like, okay, let's feed because we know Hollywood is shady as fuck, right? So they're just like, let's feed all these negative stories. And that's, I think, why maybe other people were like, yeah, she'd be great. But, you know, then they would see her movies, right? And they're all sexualized with, like, not allowing her to act or whatever, right? Right. And then hearing all these stories, they're like, well, she's too much of a liability, you know? Um, they Obviously, she was quiet during the Me Too movement, and someone in an interview had asked her, right, why she was quiet, you know, because looking back, everyone is going back and seeing all these interviews that were from 10 years before the movement or, you know, where she's like essentially was doing the Me Too movement before it, it was a thing. Right. Right. Um, and they asked her why she didn't say her experiences. Why didn't she use that time? And so. I have a quote and she was like, I just didn't think based on how I'd been received by people and by feminists that I would be a sympathetic victim. I thought if ever there were a time where the world would agree that it's appropriate to victim shame someone, it would be when I came come forward with my story. And she said that because that's what happened to her years prior when she was talking about her mistreatment. Right. Everyone, you know, victim shamed her and women did, too. Right. And so she said that's why she kept quiet when the Me Too movement was full steam ahead. Right. She was like, you know, I'm just going to get victim shamed. She was traumatized, basically. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm yeah, like, I mean, there's that. But there's also the narrative where men control the publicity around her, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, man as in probably, you know, men at the time the voices were men and you know she was probably told don't say this don't say that don't talk about this you know and i'm sure she was just biting her tongue and just fucking just pretending like things are okay and just you know when she really 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 wanted to speak her mind some more and really you know say things but at the time they're doing damage control because they're like oh you can't say that because of steven spielberg you can't say that because of michael bay you know mm -hmm. and you're talking about, you know, billionaire empires, right? That are, you know, these people, whatever they say goes, you know, how dare mm -hmm. you speak out against them, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, that sucks because they were not listening to her, you know? Mm -hmm. And that goes probably from the ground up. That goes, you know, from her everyday assistants on the movie sets to, you know, the assistant producers to the, you know, whoever was around her probably did not, you know, want to listen to her and, you know, realize that there's something wrong here and nobody's gonna address it you know mm -hmm. yeah so and you know when i started looking into you know this because again i was young probably like out being an idiot right so i just didn't pay attention there's a lot of uh articles that have been written recently just about what happened to megan and how you know, people are going back with new eyes, right? More right. open eyes, less judgmental because there's always going to be judgy people out there and basically re-examining her whole career and being like, dude, she got, they fucked, they fucked her basically. Like yeah. when I, not, you know what I mean? But, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, to me, it's sad. Um, and I'm sure that it's probably still happening now. Um, which is, you know, kind of it, unfortunate. It, you know, it's funny that it is because, you know, you know who popped up uh, recently in the news? Not that long ago. It was Josh Whedon, you know, the guy who created Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And he also directed the first two Avengers movies. No, yeah, that I didn't know that. That popped up because uh, some of the actors on, on Buffy the Vampire Slayer came forward and were like, those those days of filming were fucked. Like, he was, he was an asshole to people. Like for a guy who claims that he's a feminist, like he was treating women poorly, like it was, it was totally toxic environment. And it's just now coming out. And mm -hmm. that, that's a show that was years ago. That's, that's back in the late 90s, early 2000s around there, you know? Mm -hmm. So 
so yeah, people were saying like that, like, you know, I was saying like, fuck that guy, basically, like, you know, not, and that's surprising because it's like he always came across as like the nice guy and people were like, oh, he's a genius, he's a genius. But then all of a sudden people were like, no, like the day to day working for him like sucks, you know. Mm-hmm. So again, that's coming from the actors, you know, who that's all in line. You could search for it. That came out, you know, probably a couple months ago on the news that, you know, all that's out there. You know, that, that's their word against him, you know. Mm-hmm. But I also, you know, want to mention, that, you know, she's been making movies, like you said, she's been she's been working, and I know that I think it was last year she made a war, a war movie. I did not see it. I was hoping to see it, but I did not. I did see a movie that just came out that she made. Uh, did you hear about this one? It's called Till Death. Yeah, is it like a suspense murder yes. type thing? Yeah, yes. I saw the trailer. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I mean, the whole movie, she's she's handcuffed. To her husband which you know might have been some naughty play involved i don't know maybe you know but he dies right mm-hmm. and the whole movie she's handcuffed to his dead body and it becomes a home invasion movie like there's some there's some people coming after her and breaking her house so she has to deal with dragging a dead body throughout the house and doing shit you know it's fucking crazy dude like it's good it's good i was mm-hmm. really i was really happy to see her in this because you know she's in the movie the whole time and it wasn't like oh let's show her in topless oh let's show her in bloody panties or anything it was like none of that it was smart you know mm-hmm. it was smart and it was not about sexualizing her. it was about like what what is she gonna do you know like mm-hmm. do we believe her like what you know and, and i thought i thought it was good i thought it was really good and i yeah. believe it's out now and and um yeah, if you're listening, definitely check it out. It's called Till Death, and it's really good. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. Um, I did see the trailer for it, um, but it's not a horror movie, right? It's just like suspense, I mean, right? We, like, I would classify it as horror, but see, within the horror genre, we have subcategories, right? Like thriller, suspense, mm-hmm. you know? Educate me, educate me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it would be like home invasion, thriller, you know, suspense, you know? So mm-hmm. there's no monsters, there's no, like, it, it's just a girl fighting for her life, you know, trying to hide, basically, you know, so. So I can watch it. Yeah, you can watch it. Um, I recommend it because it's it's something, it, it's 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 some, it's fun in the sense that you're, you're wondering how is she going to get out of, you know, like, what the, you know, what is she going to do? And then you when she does these things, you're like, oh, fuck, can't you just, like, that's crazy, you know, um, but definitely, yeah. Um, definitely i thought it was something that she her, her role in this was really good and it was really a good role for her um i just you know people need to, need to see more of this you know because mm-hmm. it's like she's you know she's got potential she's you know she's you know she's still i don't know how old she is now she is she is she in her 30s now or 40s i mean 30s, 30s. i think she might be younger than me a few a okay. few years okay and she's still a beautiful woman you know she's great um and she could definitely act. It's just that, you know, people got to give her a chance, got to write these roles for her. I mean, she's a mom. She has, what, two kids, three kids with uh, Brian Austin Green? I think three, yeah. Three, yeah. So, I mean, you yeah. know, she's a mom and she looks great. You know, she's obviously, she obviously keeps fit and, you know, she's healthy and, you know, she does these side projects and stuff. But, yeah, I, I think she's a great actress. I think we need to see more of her in these kind of roles of, you know, playing like uh these intellectual characters like in this case in this case it was a wife but i want to see her as a lawyer i want to see her as a doctor or a psychologist you know like something where she's like the central character of a movie because I, I you know mm-hmm. i'm you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of hers and i really, really want to see more of what somebody can bring out of her you know yeah she's 35 years old mm, yeah so yeah yeah, and you know, I I liked her. I you know, I didn't think she was terrible in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh right. Um, <laughs> I had to go see that because I used to love that <laughs> cartoon That's growing funny. up. Damn, I wish I had pizza right now. I would totally. I have pizza. Kill for one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always have pizza. Um, but yeah, so oh, so hopefully, you know, we wish her luck. We wish her with the Me Too movement. With all of these, you know, articles that were published since the Me Too movement, kind of looking back at that, Mm -hmm. 
that, you know, people are giving her work and, you know, she can build her craft and be better and better which with each row right right um and so definitely if you guys want to look at some of these art uh interviews you know she talks about it and then if you want to read like the cut has one like they're looking back people were looking at her you know right being like the me too movement without a movement because no one backed her up not even us women so something to think about yeah it's just uh, you between know, us women yeah because remember, remember this this didn't i mean it's, it's not to say that this was not in your mind as a woman you know it was in everybody's mind i think but nobody knew how to say it no nobody knew how to be the first person to come out and say it you know mm-hmm. and that's that's and that's a problem because it's like if that could be at the end of your career mm-hmm. like you could work for whatever agency and you say something you're done They'll fucking fire you. You're done. And then, then you look back and think, well, I just lost on my six figure salary, salary benefits and all that because I said something stupid, you know, but it wasn't stupid. You know, it was something very paramount, very, you know, life changing, but somebody else did it 10 years later, you know? And yeah, that, and it was a group of women who did it. it, was, it I, don't, I don't recall there being one. I know there were different voices out there. Um, I knew that um it so, started with with weinstein or is it weinstein weinstein yeah is it, with all the it kind of started with him where a lot of women came out and then it was like cosby next thing you yes, know all yeah. the women were telling their experiences like yeah. i mean reese witherspoon you know she right. didn't name who who he was but you know they all came together to talk about it you know um yeah there's a lot of i mean there was, i know that um What's her name? Anthony Bourdain's ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Um, the Italian girl. Um, oh my God, I should, I should know this because her dad's famous to, um, horror filmmaker. Yeah. Um, I don't like her. Argento. Uh, yeah, I yeah. don't like. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't like her because well, you you know what she did after you know, she, she basically, you know, she comes out of Me Too and then she, was caught herself, you know, and I'm like okay. Oh, here. with a young younger boy. Yeah, and I'm like fuck you. You know what? I don't like her is because um the the day a few days before he committed suicide so they say right right um she was on uh caught by paparazzis in italy with another man of course yeah so and then he kills himself a few days later like it's just like i i falter for it even though you know well yeah not, not only that but like i said you know she made a movie which one of my friends is in it, one of my friends is in that movie it's uh it's called the heart is deceitful above all things and that's the movie where she slept with the, with the underage actor you know mm-hmm. and then it's like how dare you come up with me too and then you're you're fucking an underage kid you know and you took photos yeah. with them in bed i'm like are you stupid you know it's like so i'm glad that you know she got written off quick um because she does, he does not deserve to be a voice. It's like I'm sorry, you know, you're 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 just as bad, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, but there were other people like you mentioned. Uh, Reese was it Reese? Was it Witherspoon? You mentioned. Mm-hmm. And then I know Sophia Bush came forward um, about that, and then pretty much everyone. Yeah, everyone had had an experience of who's some a who's a famous sort. Latina actress who's married to the wealthy French guy. Um, uh, Salma Hayek. Salma Hayek. She has a story out there and mm-hmm. disturbing, disturbing story. And then uh, God, and then. Uh, what's her name? Is it Ashley Judd? I think who I used yeah, to she had love. I used to love seeing her in those suspense thriller movies, you know. And mm-hmm. she fucking quit acting because of that. Mm-hmm. Like something traumatized her so bad, she quit acting, you know. And there was a, there's another now, girl. Imagine all the women who didn't come forward. You know what I mean? There's a lot. Like like yeah. I always you know you know there, I know there's a horror movie you you won't watch uh, Alien a horror movie called Species, with. Natasha Hanstridge, she was a beautiful model, and after she made those movies, you like she, that's it. Like n- nobody knows where she is, you know. And people think that she was an, another victim, and she just never came forward, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's it's sad. Yeah. It's like, it's like when you hear the stories, you're like, what the fuck, you know? Like you always hear stories of people hooking up, right, with actors and stuff. But when you hear that they were forced or blackmailed, you know. Mm-hmm. that's fucking scary you know it's 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 it just it just makes me sick you know it's like 
shit, you know, it's like <laughs> the power is scary, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, we talked about Harvey Weinstein, mm -hmm. um, another person who spoke out about him before the Me Too movement and no one took serious because she's crazy as yes, you know in other ways is courtney love right she if you guys look up the video she literally is like they had asked her like what advice do you have for like young actresses and literally her words if you go and look this video up is like if harvey weinstein uh asks you to go to his room don't do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like oh lord um, you know what else I noticed after the Me Too movement, and I just thought about this. One of Lana Del Rey's songs uh, has like these lyrics, um, where I think it's about Harvey, um, and I can't think which one it would be. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So okay, let's see. It's a song called Cola. So let me look up the lyrics. So I didn't get this, and I'm a big Lana Del Rey. Like her 2012 albums, are, to me, are like the best. Um, the stuff after, eh. But uh, basically, it's an appropriate song, right? Um, uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, I can't find it now. Yeah, it's definitely about him. So the song is Cola, and then um, da, 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 I'm looking, looking. There's a there's a, a there's a thing where she says that she won't be performing it live anymore. Yeah. I swear she says his name. Yeah, it's something to do with the lyrics that says, "Ah, oh, he's in the sky with diamonds." It was originally written as Harvey's in the sky with diamonds yes so if you listen to the original music it says harvey right and then you listen to the lyrics you know it's like very sexualized she you know it's like inappropriate um i loved it you know um but looking back it's like she probably had to deal with him and wrote about it in her weird way but you know everybody's different <laughs> Yeah, that's, I mean, that, you know, I'm glad that that dude's done. It's just, I don't, I don't know how he's still in prison or alive or, you know, or mm -hmm. whatever, but man, I mean, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad that people, you know, these women came forward and spoke up about, you know, about him because that's exactly what needs to happen. You know, he's not the only one, mm -hmm. you know, no. there's, there's still others out there and that's, you know, the crazy thing is. Why are they still all in power? All over the world. Like yeah, why? All you know, over the world. You know, you know, the problem is all over the world is that other countries don't have rules. You know, over mm -hmm. here, over here, we have rules, right? We care, right? We have ethics. Don't touch women. Don't rape women. Don't abuse them. Don't harass them. You know, other countries don't fucking care. You know, so you mean the legal system? I mean, well, aside from that, like you know, you you need to know right from wrong. You know. Uh, but yeah, legal system included, of course, but you know, don't do this, don't do that. In other countries, there's no rules. I mean, wh whether there is legal rules, like they don't fucking care. You know, that's why some mm -hmm. of these cases that are happening in the UK or, you know, in France and Italy, you know, that Germany, I'm just like, whoa, that's crazy. Like, how is that dude still, you know, making movies or, you know, got a career going on or, you know, whatever, you know? Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, you guys should, you know, support Megan Fox, <laughs> whether you think she's like a bad actress or whatever. I just think that everyone, including us women, looked the other way when she was just basically saying the same message that we were telling women recently that they were courageous yeah. for speaking out. So I think we owe it to her to support her career. So right. anyway. But I wanted to move into our next hot topic. Hot topic. I know you know what this is. Ooh, when you say hot, I think of Britney Spears. Yes. I'm not going to spend too much time in it because I have given her a lot of my time. Um, but a lot has happened since she spoke up uh, publicly in court, right? Um, yes. 
So you and I talked in my podcast the year before where I kind of told you a timeline of a lot of the stuff and a lot of the stuff that just did not make sense. And I was reading court documents. Remember I had told you they submitted that they wanted this to be a business model for them. Right. How one of the doctors was going to be investigated and he died of natural causes apparently, right? Um, how they said she had dementia. And I told you as a nurse, I know that that's bullshit because she would be really fucked up, right? And right. I also told you as a nurse, no one is saying that she's not bipolar, that she's not. We see that shit now everywhere. Everyone is, right? Right. Um, we all have breakdowns, right? We all get depressed. We all fucking get pissed off and yell, right? She had so much people around her wanting a piece of her for, you know, right. all, for years, right? Yeah. Who Who's not going to get go crazy? Right. But my thing was, is I remember I went on this whole rant of the family Yes. How the, the brother was on that podcast and he kept saying our family business, it's been good to us, the right. conservatorship. And everything that I said has been fucking like, like literally proven, right? And, you know, she, they said she had dementia. Sometimes she didn't go to court. And in these court documents, guys, if you guys go back, they said she was in a comatose state. And I told you, right, Leonie, I said, they're medicating her. So let's say she is bipolar. They're over-medicating her. Of course, her. yeah. And the long-term effects of these medications, we don't know. And we don't know what they're giving her. But it, it sounds to me like this is all wrong. And th that was me coming from a nurse's perspective, reading all these, you know, court documents that other Britney fans who were lawyers were doing for fun, for free. Not for fun. But, right. you know, it's, it's definitely something that's happening um, I think as the movement started to get its steam, you know, we had podcasts talking about it. We had her fans going out there with the free Britney. You know, people still thought you're fucking crazy. You guys are psycho. You guys are like, you know, I told, remember I told you, I was like, there's no way though that her posts are her there. She's posting these things, but there, there's no way that they're all hers because right before court date they would post these videos repetitive videos right after she spoke guys um after she spoke um now this the reason i bring this up is because it was shown in court documents that she has people who she submits social media posts and they veto or allow her to post and which is what I told you a lot of us thought was that the company that's getting paid to run her Instagram and you know what I mean, right. would always post things that made her look really bad right before court. Right. Yeah. Then after she talked, um, on her, you know, the court that everyone was like, Oh my God, this is like a bombshell, but all this shit has been in public records guys. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. been in front of us, but anyways, this again, it's kind of like the Megan thing, right? Everyone's like, oh, you guys are crazy. Da, da, da. You know, and we believe that the issue is we believe everything we're fucking fed. Right. And that's what we're, we're seeing a fucking pattern. So then these people that are telling you this, this, that, you know, you're like saying, no, you guys are crazy. Anyways, long as I'm going on a fucking rant. Oh my God, I need to calm down. No, 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 go, go, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Keep going. So, Basically, we. I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up is because after that, she was on vacation in Maui, right? That's what she posted on her Instagram. But guess what? Britney fans, we realize that that's the fucking Maui trip she took last year. Same fucking videos. Yeah. <laughs> like, and everyone still believed it, right? Now we're seeing her post more stuff where she's fucking pissed right and she doesn't give a shit and she's calling out her family because she got a new lawyer of her choosing who seems apparently is a badass fucking prosecutor you know what right. i mean like you know shit's i don't i i so now we, what we're seeing are more of her posts that aren't being um censored because the company right. would that that would post her stuff would veto she couldn't talk about a lot of things and guys, you if you guys have had grandparents that have had dementia, Alzheimer's, you guys know that it is a debilitating, progressively getting worse disease. You know, she she wrote her speech. She was reading her speech. You know what I mean? Like right. that was 13. Remember I told you I said if 
I don't believe that she has dementia. So right. whatever doctor signed off on that shit should be investigated. There's no fucking way. And trust me, last year when the movement started getting um, like fr- traction, people started to resign. One of them being Lou Taylor. I didn't name her last time, but Lou Taylor has been known to want to start conservatorships. Um, she tried to get Lindsay Lohan in it, uh, Courtney Love. You know, she resigned, but they're they're going to come after her. If this lawyer is as badass as his his resume says, this is just the beginning of a lot of criminal investigations. You guys heard it here first, and I haven't been wrong with all my conspiracies, guys. Right. <laughs> Not once. No. Um, she's going to be let off. She, she wants to stay on the conservatorship because she also understands that it takes time to prove her case, right? She's proven her case. So what California law says, and she can sue California if she wants to, the state, is if you're able to work and make money, you should be managing your own money. So they didn't give her that right. That's a fucking right that the state kind of over, overlooked. Right. So I know a lot of people are going to get in trouble in the next few years. Um, which I think the biggest thing people want to know is, will Britney be freed from the conservatorship? She has two, one of her person and one of her finance. Um, she may want to, I think her person is the one that she's most um wants to get rid of the most which she just wants to fucking drive you know she wants to just spend her own money the way she wants right right um but i think it's gonna be somewhat of a transition phase it it, proceedings take months and months so she had requested to speak publicly last year so it only happened in june so it's gonna take time but you see the ball rolling quickly now because you know there's not much more it's a sinking ship right there's no fucking way and california and the you know the la county court you know is they probably know that shit's gonna go down and there may be an internal investigation in the future um so it and i remember i told you it's like it, this is was meant to help the elderly who cannot or who are have disabilities right but there, there is, if when there is money involved, there's a lot of abuse. And, you know, remember I told you there are law firms that specifically, this is all they do. You right. know what I mean? And they charge a lot. And, and so all I wanted to say was that since this happened, now everyone going back to the free, you know, the Megan Fox thing, now everyone's coming out to fucking say their story of the shit that they saw. Do you know right. what I mean? Right. And that pisses me off because why the fuck is this industry just like the movie industry? It's like everyone's so fucking scared to speak up. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so now everyone's like, oh, well, I noticed this or well, I noticed this or like they were already controlling her um, before the conservatorship. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just, I don't know. The point is I'm really excited for her. If she doesn't want to perform again, I'm happy for her as long as she's happy and you know she's been wanting to have her father off for years and it's all in court documents and he's always been able to paint her as she's not good she can't come to court because she's in a comatose state you know but then she's on the x factor and on you know what was that show I used to love Jane the Virgin she was on there you know rehearsing lines memorizing that shit tell me that shit's dementia like I'm not saying she doesn't have bipolar, you know what I mean? Or she's not bipolar or she didn't have post, you know, depression, you know? And the other thing, guys, and I get really passionate about this. I'm going to shut up um, and let you talk, Leonie. It's just that imagine being secluded. So like Lance Bass' husband was saying that like they changed her number and so she was texting people and no one would would get the messages. Do you know what I mean? Because they right. had changed her number and they wouldn't even tell her. And so can you imagine the depression we felt over this year being, you know, or at least some of us who live alone, right? To being isolated and thinking people are ignoring you, right? Um, there's an interview of her cousin uh, from years ago. She's the only one that spoke up and literally was like, my uncle said he would fucking deal with me if I only get away from her and leave her alone and no one listened to her they were like oh she's crazy right right she fucking picked up her father from rehab 
who's known to be abusive. You know what I mean? There's right. Her sons have a restraining order against him. And I'm glad she brought that up in court. She might have not said it the way some of you guys think she should have, but fuck, she's pissed. This was her chance to talk. But, you know, a year or two years ago, she gave up some of her... She had like 50-50. She gave up some of uh, her... I think she had like 30% parental after this because, you know, she... Her, her his dad has is you know they have restraining orders on against right. him and no one's talking about that but i guarantee the lord's gonna do its work in the next few years shit's gonna happen especially in the next few months but in the long term all the people all these parties that had their hands in the money like uh you know the people that were resigning right the lawyer resigned because he wasn't advocating for her you know what i mean right. so he had no other choice stupid but he 13 years if she was saying i want my dad off he never advocated for that right. only up until last year when he saw that the me too movement were reading court documents right yeah um the business manager no the who's it who's the the manager the music manager the guy who yes. resigned recently he basically told the court i'm resigning because she wants to retire she fucking told you that two years ago. Right. That she was retiring because as long as the dad was on there. So why the fuck were you still collecting a check? You know what I mean? Like, right. I don't get it. I have fuck everyone on this, but I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm excited for her to come back and, and totally cool. If she doesn't do music again, you know, that's fine. Yeah, totally because fine. I think she should do a tell all book and, write about this as part of her therapeutic recovery you know mm -hmm. and maybe even do a book tour and her fans are going to come out and you know oh yeah i'm gonna be there buy the book and meet her you know and all <laughs> that you know, get it signed whatever you know um because you know it's like what they did to her was awful and you know what she has all the right to name names and to tell the stories because i'm sure there's a lot of like you mentioned Lance spass uh from in sync right Mm -hmm. I, I keep getting in sync and Backstreet Boys wrong, but yeah. <clears throat> but I'm sure there's a lot of friends like him that have been reaching out to her that can't get to her because they mm -hmm. blocked the deleted, blocked or changed a phone number or whatever. So you're right. Imagine, imagine being isolated and that's everyday life for years. You know, thirteen years. Yeah. yeah, and it's like that takes a toll because it even if you have. Even if you're locked off from the world, you still think, well, I'm lucky because I still have my family. She has no family. Mm -hmm. who, who who, in her family is on her side? No one. Or probably like her cousin. But the if you look at that interview from years ago, she literally was like, my uncle said, you need to get away or I'm going to yeah. make you disappear. Right. Like, who, he want, what the fuck? But imagine, like, but imagine that, though. Because this girl, she, she grew up in the South. She's from, what, Mississippi, right, or something? Or, mm -hmm. I mean, the South, you have family values, right? You're typically Christian. Your family is close. And mom and dad, whatever they say goes, and you obey. You know what I'm saying? All that shit's out the door because she has nobody she can trust. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's and that, That's got to hurt on so many deep levels because friends, I mean, right now her, her friends, whoever her friends, friends true friends are that are still around that's going to be the only family she has that she's going to be able to trust you know but yeah the sad thing is the people in her own blood line in her home that she grew up with she can't trust them anymore and mm -hmm. she's gonna have to put restraining orders on all of them and you know and and all of them are, are out of her life you know and hopefully that she surrounds herself with good people mm -hmm. starting with the lawyers who are have good intentions to you know care for her you know, and let her do what she wants to do, say what she wants to say, and, you know, but look after her, you know, and, and give an advisor and tell her, like, hey, don't bother with this because, you know, they'll just come after you or they'll just cause you more pain or whatever. Just, you know, give her good advice, you know, and, and whoever yeah. these friends are that have been long term friends, I don't know if it's still Paris Hilton or uh, Lindsay Lohan. I don't know if these people are still around or still friends or not or whatever, you know, I mean, a lot of them have moved on. There's there's no more drama with them. You don't see them on the news anymore. They're not, you know, being chased around anymore. They're 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 older now, right? Some of them have kids and families and you know, they could 
perhaps be helpful, hopefully, you know, yeah. to, to her, to her recovery, you know? But yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm glad, I'm happy that this is turning around for her. I really hope this is a big wake up call because she might not be the only, the only one out there. There might be many others, you know, that are in the same situation. Yeah. And, and you know who I thought of a lot, um, looking back and I was talking to a friend, I said, you know, who, for all we know, Marilyn Monroe you know could have been they could have been drugging her up you know what i mean but then right. the the narrative now we keep going back to the narrative out there is she was doing this she was this she was, no one's saying she was perfect you yeah. know what i mean but yeah. they were trying to make her work right she had handlers and i was like who knows maybe they were forcing those medications on her right um the other thing that happened when you know now that everyone was looking into this and everyone believes Brittany now and everyone's like wow we've we everyone's apologizing to her you know what i mean for not listening or maybe being part of the problem right people were looking into the show like i guess black mirror i've never watched the show but i guess there's a miley cyrus episode yes and everyone said that has to be about britney so whoever wrote it they were like it has to be so yes. i watched it um it's not the same per se but it's right. definitely a, basically a pop star who is being drugged by a family member yep. who you know they talk about her as business you know um she stopped taking her meds it, it's just a she's when she's not in the interviews she's sad she's depressed you know, she's doing that because it's like, that's what she's being told. Right. And so a lot of people were like, wow, that that had to be about Britney, you know, like, because apparently now that everyone's talking about what they saw, no one said anything. You know what I mean? They were yeah. just like, oh, she's probably doped up. Guys, just think of when you're fucking drunk. We look terrible. So imagine these psychotropic meds that they're giving her and lithium, dude. Did I mentioned lithium to you, too. Yeah. It's like it makes you all look groggy and like high and shit. And so people were believing the narrative that her own family was putting out. And TMZ is guilty of it because TMZ was always before court days was always putting out stories. Right. Um, that their source told them looking back, TMZ was on their payroll, sadly. So fuck TMZ. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come after me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's it's sad. It's it's just sad that she has to do a hard reset on everybody in her life, and who knows this, this um, character who's dating her, Sam. Um, oh, I already told you he's on payroll. Yeah, I don't trust him but he, whatsoever. But you know, mm. but what is she going to believe? Is she going to believe the lie? You know, is he going to be? Is he going to be the the guy who pulls the puppet strings? You know that she doesn't know about till she finds out much later. You know, what I'm saying like. How much yeah. pain is how much more pain is gonna come out of this you know or a it, lot and i feel you know? for her and everyone has to be sympathetic for her because the hard part of actually getting rid of and extracting these people these right. so-called family members right that's what's coming and i feel like her life for the next few years is going to be very uncertain let's say the conservatorship ends at the end of the year and just hypothetical like her life is still not going to be the same right you know, everything's been managed for her, you know, so hopefully this law firm stays on board, helps her, guides her. Um, word on the street is that they are now changing uh, since the new lawyer came in, they have changed security to one that they're picking. So maybe I think that's the first move to weed out the not so nice people around her. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and then when I looked at the, you know, the rehab place they sent her to back in the day they diagnosed her apparently with like postpartum depression which is what we had talked about that she probably had yeah so it's just unfortunate um that stuff that most women go through she was going through but with an array of like fucking people on her back and you know who's she gonna trust paparazzi on her ass and no one really seemed to care about her at the time so right. yeah anyway Keep an eye out, guys. Like, there's going to be reform in this industry, especially in California. I think she has a case against California only because the law literally says if you are able to work and make your own money, you should be managing your money. And so right. they're they're going to audit the entire case. I think. That's so good. it's gonna it's gonna take time, but for sure. Remember, remember, I was like, dude, they said she had dementia. There's as a nurse, I do not believe this shit. Right. <laughs> 
So anyway, but yeah. So good luck, Brittany. And I know the next few years are going to be crucial and a lot of people are going to get in trouble. And, you know, you guys are probably going to see her now that she's in control and not being censored over Instagram. She's just going to be calling people out and whatever. I would fucking say do it. Right. Be true to yourself. So go yeah. ahead. You have my blessing. She deserves it. She deserves a whole new life, you know, and, and yeah. a happy one. And one where she's at peace and be able to see her kids and able to, you know, share with her fans, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wish her the best. Yeah. Well, thank you, Leone, for joining me again on a little hot topic uh, discussion. Yeah, it's fun. Um, thank you. If we, if we can take anything away from these two stories is that we shouldn't really believe everything the media tells us, guys. And, and... When I say media, I'm not discussing CNN and Fox. No, I'm just saying like, you know, we're being fed things by sources, right? right? And so we run with these stories. And like I said, some of this information was right in front of us, but we chose to just go with the flock of people believing what the media was feeding us. Right. And what we're learning, whether it's from Hollywood, right? The music industry, conservatorships you know is that they're going to feed the media what they need to benefit them you know so yeah. i think we just have to i'm not anti-media because you know we're doing a podcast you know what i mean like, <laughs> right <laughs> but it's just i've noticed that the mainstream media is not very i guess for we we're they're being fed stories by certain people with money you know it's what it comes down to and so of course. just doing your own homework and being open to all possibilities that's yeah. all. Yeah. So. Well said. <laughs> so thank you guys for listening and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. That was episode 67 of the Purposely Curious podcast. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on most podcast platforms and follow us on social media at Purposely Curious on Instagram and at Purposely C Pod on Twitter. That's Purposely the letter C Pod. Until next time, you know what to do.